everybody. Uh, how are you guys doing so far today? So everybody, I like this. This is something we're learning about Partner Summit. Third year in a row. Uh, morning, everybody's hungover, barista party, I get it. Lunch happens. Suddenly everyone's a little more lively. It's really great. Um, thanks for the Mazer plug, guys, because you're setting me up really, really well for this. Uh, it was almost shameless, but I like it. Um, are you guys enjoying the coffee service today? Yes. Awesome. We worked, uh, worked really hard. I'm, I'm really glad it came together the way it did. Um, there's a couple people I do want to thank in addition to uh, who the Captain Cloud guys mentioned earlier. Um, one of them is definitely Curtis. Uh, Mr. Brant Curtis is here today, uh, a guy who is at the helm of his company, has been schlepping batch brews for all of y'all today. It's been incredible to watch. He's been so helpful. Um, we're honored to have him here and have him as a part of this. Give it up, give it up. Uh, and uh, Cafe Imports has been huge for this. Uh, they were so helpful. I had a conversation a few weeks ago with Joe Morocco and uh, Noah Namwitz about just this whole idea of what this was, and they right away were really excited about it and uh, shipping out coffees to all of the people. I mean, the logistics of it were, were kind of funny, really, when you think about it, shipping samples to four different roasters and, and all that and different batches of coffee. Um, so give them a round of applause. Thank you so much to Cafe Imports for all the work that they've done. And then uh, finally, the, the third company I want to mention is the company I'm going to talk about for the next 10 minutes, which is Mazer. Um, we've got Luca Matatroso and some of the crew here. Um, they are one of our favorite partners that we get to work with on a daily basis. Uh, we are so grateful to be able to work with a company that builds such a rock solid product. And I'm going to talk to you about that a little bit today. So we're going to talk about Mazer for about the next 10 minutes. Um, so. We're going to talk a lot about filter coffee at first. So filter coffee. When people think of Mazer and they think of filter coffee, this is probably the image that they might get in their head. Uh, you might have seen these floating around the internet. Thanks to Breno, we don't have a lot of these in the United States. Um, and this isn't even really for filter coffee. This is more for grocery. Um, but starting this weekend, we hope that when you think of filter coffee uh, and Mazer, that this is what you'll think of. This is a brand new grinder, and it's called the ZM Filter. Uh, it's a project that's been going on for a while. As, as Whitney mentioned earlier this morning, Mazer had to really take some time to learn filter coffee. And not just filter coffee in general, but the filter coffee that you make and the filter coffee that you drink. Uh, it looks kind of familiar. A lot of the early feedback we've gotten is that it might look like a competitive product that's out there. Um, but we want you to know that we're really proud of the design of this grinder, and Mazer's really proud of this grinder as well. It's actually built after this grinder here, which is uh, a grinder from the 50s called the original ZM grinder. Uh, it was quite an innovative product for its time, and we believe that the ZM filter uh, of today is going to be an equally innovative product itself. So just to talk a little bit about what it has, we're talking about flat burrs, 81 millimeters, uh, incredibly quick grinding speeds. Uh, again, like we were saying, this is a grinder that's designed to brew coffee like you brew your coffee, uh, whether it's brew by the cup, batch brew. Uh, and again, the goals weren't just extraction percentage. We get so hooked on this idea of 22% extractions being so important, but we wanted the coffee to taste sweet as well. So that was one of the other big points of emphasis. Uh, and if you check out the, the grinder we have out there today, uh, it will look just like this, only it's black. Uh, production models, which will be available uh, later this year, are going to actually have a digital interface, and it'll actually display the amount of space between the two burrs. So you'll be able to actually know exactly what the gap is, and uh, even better yet, I believe it is supposed to have different positions where it can kind of electronically adjust between. So it's going to be a really exciting grinder. And I'm really happy to tell you that all of today's filter coffee was ground using this grinder. So if you're enjoying the filter coffee, you're enjoying the ZM filter. Uh, next, I want to talk to you a little bit about, about espresso. I'm going to echo some more thoughts that Kyle and Charles kind of put out there. Um, we're an interesting group of people. We're an interesting generation of coffee professionals. Uh, when we go back to the early 2000s till about 2010, we were doing something kind of funny. We were focusing on that idea that espresso had to be ground fresh. Again, there was a product out there. 
It was a container. You could fill it with ground coffee. And when you pulled once or pulled twice, you got a pretty consistent dose of coffee, and it actually worked. But we got hung up on this idea that the coffee had to be ground fresh. So we started using the grinder in a little bit of a different manner, thwacking. I have a recording on my phone still to this day of being in a cafe somewhere and just the obnoxious noise above all the hum of the people drinking coffee of just the barista working. It was like, a, it was like your barista cred was earned by how loud you could whack on that doser. It's awful times, and they're over. Uh, but you know, we started trying to manipulate this grinder. Uh, what you can kind of see there hanging off that doser is, uh, I believe it was called the Schechtermatic, uh, a little tube to help the coffee actually fall straight when you're pulling so hard because otherwise you're tossing it to the left. Again, using the grinder not for how it was designed to be used. Then in 2009, we finally got what we wanted. We got fresh ground coffee directly to the portafilter with the on-demand grinders that we use today. And at the time, this was great. We were using shot glasses and filling them up to a certain volume of coffee. We were filling the basket to a certain volume. Everything we were doing was kind of obtuse, but it worked, and we were happy for a time. And over the last few years, we've started getting more obsessed about scales and the dose, tenth of a gram, it has to be. You've got a pre-way to do that, and it's getting a little tiring. It's getting a little old. So it's time for an update. I'm excited to show you guys this. This is what we're calling the Smart Portafilter Platform. And on the most basic level, it's going to look kind of simple. It's a load cell built into the grinder that holds the portafilter. And on that basic level, it is simple. But this goes beyond that. It's an intelligent, integrated scale system. It communicates with you. You can communicate with it. In fact, it falls almost just short of giving you Siri for your coffee. What do I mean by that? Well, for the barista, SPP interacts with you in some ways. So what I mean by that is that it learns over time. So when I go out to this grinder, uh, and I'm putting a new coffee in, and I tell it that I want 18 grams of coffee, I'm going to set that portafilter down, and I'm going to hit the button, and it's not going to get the dose right the first time. And that's OK, because the next time, it's going to get a little bit closer to the target. And on the third and the fourth tries, it's going to nail it. And then let's say I throw in a different coffee. Again, same process. It's going to learn, and it's going to catch up. Now, I'm a little old school. So when I'm actually grinding coffee, I like to hit the button to actually start the, the grinder itself. But I don't have to with SPP. If I want, I can turn on a mode where I can just set down the portafilter, and it'll automatically start for me. Uh, I also have this habit that sticks with me from my competition days, where I like to get about 2 thirds of the coffee into the basket, settle, add the other third, keep anything over, from overfilling the basket, uh, and keeping my whole workspace nice, neat, and clean. SPP allows me to do this. I can actually set the exact percentage of my dose that it will grind, pause, wait for me to settle, and then resume grinding. So for the barista, it's really easy to use. You can store the weight of your portafilter in the grinder so that it will recognize it right away. So far, there are no limits to how many portafilters it can hold, and it's the easiest thing to program and work with. So our baristas are using that today. But what's really, really exciting about SPP is what it means for you, the cafe owner. You've got a lot of things to worry about when it comes to your business. It's hard to manage things like when you should change your burrs. SPP can tell you when it's time to change your burrs. You might be wondering, how much coffee did I grind today? SPP will tell you. You might be wondering how much coffee you ground a month ago. That access, the access to that information will be there as well. So let's say that you have a successful cafe, things are going really well, and you're getting ready to do location number two but you've got to get your projections ready to go after that investment. You can go back, look at your data, and actually see how much coffee you were grinding for the first six months to build your business plan. Uh, I would hardly have a hard time doubting that eventually there will be a future where you're midway through the week, your inventory is getting low, and your roaster calls you to let you know that you need more coffee. That's where we're going with this. So SPP has both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and we'll be able to communicate through all kinds of different channels. So that's where I say that this is the system for today and for the future, and I think it's going to be really exciting. So our friends at Mazer are working really hard to get these products in our hands. Doing what they do, 
they won't give them to us until they're perfect. So like I said earlier, ZM filter, we're looking probably towards the end of the year. And uh, I know they're hoping to have smart porta filter uh, into production by the end of the year. But again, you won't see it until it's perfect. So thank you. <laughs>